Good evening to one and all. On behalf of the Federation of Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to this interactive meeting on India and the UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement that was recently signed. What are the benefits, opportunities and the way forward? I acknowledge the valued presence of uh, Dr. Shrikar Reddy. Welcome, sir. Uh, a big round of applause. And if, if I may recall, we met uh, Dr. Uh, Shrikar Reddy at Dubai when the, his, uh, he was along with his entire team, I think 30 member delegation from the ministry visiting Dubai again for the negotiations. And uh, it is commendable that uh, 880 page document was negotiated in a record time of 88 days. So that's again a big achievement. Um, FTCCI along with the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, um, State Government of Telangana, the Industries Department. The three of us have come together and planned this program today uh, again to um, impart knowledge on what are the benefits, significance of the FT FTA that's been signed and Dr. Reddy is going to give a comprehensive uh, presentation on the same. Uh, the event is very timely, one, because UAE is our third largest trading partner and second, 
we've read and we've heard that it's going to be a game changer so we are going to hear more from you and before we begin the session we would like to show a short film of FTCCI because today I believe we have 50% non-members who joined us. The largest business organization of Telangana state with a legacy of excellence the voice of the industry representing the interests of 25,000 businesses of all sizes, sectors and regions. Empowering trade through advocacy, solution and standard setting. Opening new avenues for unprecedented growth. Laying the foundation for an industrial transformation in the state of Telangana. Voiced for the next century and beyond. The Federation of Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FTCCI. Together, let's rewrite the vision for a progressive future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I now invite the dignitaries to come onto the stage. Dr. Srikar Reddy, IFS Joint Secretary, Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Mr. K. Bhaskar Reddy, President of FTCCI. Mr. Sitaram Reddy, Additional DGFT, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Mr. Anil Agarwal, Senior Vice President of FTCCI. Mr. Meela Jayadev, Vice President of FTCCI. Mr. Krishna Bhaskar will be joining us shortly in probably another 10 minutes from now. So before we begin the session, we would like to present a small planter on behalf of the FTCCI to all our dignitaries. I now invite uh, President Mr. Bhaskar Reddy to deliver the welcome address. Good evening. A warm welcome to you all. Dr. Srikar Reddy, IFS Joint Secretary, Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Uh, Mr. G. Sitaram Reddy, ITS, Additional Director General of Foreign Trade, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Uh, Mr. Krishna Bhaskar is uh, about to join. Uh, Mr. Anil Agarwal, Mila Jaydev and Kathy, my colleagues. Past Presidents, Managing Committee Members, Members of FTCCI, Press and media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and a warm welcome to this uh, successful interactive meeting today. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this important uh, interactive meeting on India and United Arab Emirates Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, SEPA. So, opportunities and way forward. My special uh, welcome to Srikar Redigaru, who has all the way steered this uh, excellent uh, agreement uh, representing Commerce Ministry, Government of India. On behalf of Federation of Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I compliment the Government of India for this comprehensive economic partnership agreement and uh, FTCCI welcomes wholeheartedly this wonderful agreement which has made uh, both between UAE and India which will propel a uh, lot of economic activity. This is a landmark trade pact and this will propel two friendly nations forward towards a magnificent sh uh, shared destiny. So the United Arab uh, Emirates is India's natural partner, uh, third largest partner, but in terms of volume and uh, it is a second largest partner. Uh, so this we are very confident that uh, this SEPA will open up many new avenues and collaborations and will benefit businesses from the countries and beyond UAE because United Arab Emirates is a uh, key 
uh, gateway for entire uh, uh, that pre that part of the uh, globe and uh, we have lot of commonalities uh, like this particular trade agreement will uh, propel uh, the employment generation i think uh, i think lot will be given uh, I, we should hear from the uh, uh, from the lion's mouth <laughs> horse's mouth <laughs> whatever you <want. laughs> whatever you want. Uh, because in terms of uh, the trade uh, they are uh, indian delegation worked like lion in making it an excellent agreement and uh, uh, i i don't want to steal those words from uh, uh, him and i am very much delighted to inform you that uh, ftcci jointly with government of telangana led a business delegation to uh, dubai uh, during this uh, uh, global expo and uh, fortunately at the same time the indian contingent led by uh, sri karedi garu they have come all the way to dubai to uh, discuss these agreements this has happened in a very short du duration i believe and our team has negotiated excellently in making this uh, uh, agreement a reality and uh, this delegation where we went uh, it is like uh, one day before going to exam the entire trade delegation was going for discussions and uh, fortunately uh, our trade trade delegation uh, from uh, telangana uh, consisting of uh, almost 20 delegates were there on that time and we had a fortunate that we had a very close interaction with the team and just before going to exam we have given lot of tips so that uh, ultimately it has come as a reality and this uh, we, we were just skeptical at that time because lot of uh, uh, on these negotiations a lot of give and take issues will be there uh, but uh, i think our team has successfully negotiated and uh, some of the important happenings during this expo for us as a telangana uh, business delegation excellent presence of telangana business community during this telangana week we were there everywhere uh, and uh, joint participation of ftcci with state government uh, on various platforms we met many uh, delegates many business houses there uh, the promotional video of our delegates played continuously during telangana week and deep insights into business chamber functioning and business atmosphere and press and media in uae and telangana gave an excellent coverage to this and uh, actually i reserve my comments uh, because when mr krishna baskar is not there uh, and I keep telling this, I think some of you who have missed it out, like when I was, we were discussing with the uh, Dubai Chamber of Commerce, um, with, with Mr. Uh, President Omar Khan, and uh, in the presence of uh, Telangana, uh, uh, headed by uh, APIC Chief Narsimha Reddy, so I boasted myself that uh, FTCCI is 105-year-old organization, and we are largest in the state of Telangana. We have 3,000 direct members and 25,000 indirect members. So, so then I asked him, Mr. Omar Khan, how, what is your membership base? So he said, to my shock, 2,70,000 members. So I, I was a little surprised because entire Dubai is uh, like uh, uh, not even matches in anything with Telangana. So then the reason for it, what he said, like in Dubai and UAE, by law, any business registers in the land of Dubai has to become a member of any trade body, whether any chamber or a trade body. And uh, Dubai Chamber of Commerce being the forefront, they grabbed maximum and uh, 2.7 lakh members were there. So then after coming here on various fora, we appealed to state government of Telangana. Look, now one one lakh businesses are there in this uh, uh, state of Telangana and uh, if you count hardly uh, less than 10,000 people are members of various uh, chambers or various uh, trade bodies so government should take a proactive step because now we are not having 90,000 business houses data with us like let them be part of any small uh, association but you should have some connection with the government so that uh, what sector you are operating, what business you are operating, uh, what are the quality parameters you are, uh, your environment, all these things, somehow we need to connect with the government of Telangana so that we all can make uh, a change in the uh, trade, commerce and uh, industry development in the state of Telangana. That was our appeal and uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Bhaskar is not there and Mr. Jayesh is unable to make it because of COVID and he is unable to speak uh, properly. Uh, but uh, definitely the, I use this fora to highlight this point. And FTCCI will continue to organize business delegation to various countries, more particularly with UAE and exploring business opportunities, thereby en enhancing trade and economic uh, activity between both the countries. I would also like to mention that uh, FTCCI started conducting series of uh, skill development programs to strategize and identify the major challenges in the roadmap and uh, key gaps. So uh, uh, I think we uh, thank uh, Government of India and uh, Commerce Ministry. They have come forward and extending whatever, whenever we ask for any support, uh, they are there uh, to support. Of course, through Telangana government, uh, FTCCI is kind enough to receive that kind of a support from Government of India and Government of Telangana in organizing uh, skill development programs and look forward to continued uh, uh, cooperation from both the governments. So the signing of SEPA is an encouraging sign for uh, businesses in both India and UAE uh, to see further strengthening of already strong uh, trade relationship between the two countries. Both countries have relaxed the regulations and laws to invite more foreign investment into their nation. Both Indian and UAE investors have to take advantage of these uh, initiatives and cross-border investment between these two countries. Now with the signing of SEPA, uh, we should expect exponential growth. Uh, I think I heard like 0.7% of GDP will be grown and a lot of employment uh, opportunities will be created. And in entire gamut, uh, I am uh, very happy that uh, Telangana is going to take a major share uh, as we have a very close connection businesses between UAE and India. And I am also happy that both uh, these at Commerce Ministry, both uh, uh, Secretary Mr. Subramaniam and uh, Joint Secretary uh, uh, Srikar Reddy are both son of soils of Telugu states. And we are very, very proud during this time this agreement has happened. I really compliment and uh, uh, I thank uh, both of them and also I thank uh, uh, Sitaram Reddy Garu for taking his time and uh, joining us and he is always uh, uh, in forefront in helping FTCCI at all times and uh, I once again welcome you all to this initiative um, interactive meeting and uh, assure FTCCI's cooperation and uh, please uh, take advantage of this thing and uh, any doubts about uh, bilateral uh, issues because they are there in every each and detail of the discussions if you have any doubts, uh, post this program, if we can clarify those doubts and uh, may, I hope this agreement will help uh, both Telangana, India and UAE a great future uh, business development. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vaskar Reddy, President of FTCC for the welcome address. Uh, we recognize the presence of uh, Mr. Mahesh Desai, Chairman EEPC India. Mr. Mahendra Tail, President of uh, Hyderabad Jewelry Manufacturers Association. Mr. Vikram Singh from MEA, Ministry of External Affairs. Uh, Mr. Rishikesh Reddy from the ADGFT office, Hyderabad. Uh, Mr. Sudhir, Sudhin Paul uh, from the Commissionerate of Industries Export Wing. Mr. Rajendra, Director Logistics from uh, Telangana Government. Uh, Dr. Nageshwar Rao, IAS retired. Uh, thank you and uh, I thank you one and all for joining this meeting. I now request uh, Mr. G. Sitaram Reddy, ITS uh, Additional DGFT, Hyderabad to address the participants. <coughs> Dr. Shrikar Reddy. IFS Joint Secretary, Ministry of Commerce, the Chief Guest of this occasion, Sri Bhaskar Garu, President, Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Sri Agarwal Garu, Senior Vice President, Sri Mila Jaydev Garu, Vice President, Sri Narwane, Chief Executive Office of Chambers of Commerce, distinguished invitees for this interactive meeting. We are fortunate to have today with us Dr. Shrikar Redigaru, the Chief Negotiator for this India-UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Last time when Thomas Secretary came to Hyderabad and we had an interaction with him, he promised that we are going to have a 
SIPA with UAE very soon and we are also going to sign some early agreement with India-Australia agreement and still we are also going with UK and other things. I was little skeptical because I handled bilateral and multilateral free trade agreements during 2010 and 2017 in three ministries. I know the difficulties, how to start, commence the negotiations, organize them, finalizing the text, getting approvals, it's a hell lot of a task, especially for the chief negotiator. He has to balance the various interests. I am sure he would have faced the same thing during this meeting also. If you just look at it, Dubai will, UAE will be having about average customs tariffs of about 5%, whereas we'll be having about average of 10% is there. So there is little bit asymmetry is there. Although the exports and imports are same, maybe skewed towards petroleum products and gem and sugar, other than those things. And I have never come across an agreement signed within a span of some three months time, started and concluded. It would have been the first free trade agreement or SIPA. In fact, free trade agreement is somewhat, whereas this is a SIPA which includes more than trading goods and services. So it must have been a very hectic and pressured job as far as Dr. Shrikar Reddy is concerned. I don't want to go into the details of what are the opportunities available under this thing is there because this is for an individual exporter will be able to see it, an individual importer will be able to see it. The only problem will be with the domestic manufacturers of these goods. See, they have got concerns. But in any free trade agreement or commercial economic partnership agreement, there is a give and take is there. If you look at trees, you, you miss the woods. This is what I say because I handled from three different angles. So very difficult task and this agreement is come after almost 10 years. This is the major trade agreement India has signed. In fact, a couple of years back, we withdrew from the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. It was sending a signal that India is not keen to engage with the world. That is not the truth. In fact, after 2008 financial crisis, it's the developed countries who are going back on these free trade principles. It's India who is pursuing that. You people stick to your words, and those things are there. Now we are going to have a limited agreements with other countries also. So we are signaling to the world that India is open. We are looking forward open. We are no longer looking at a protectionist to our industry or something like that. I will leave to the details as well as the nuances of this agreement to the chief negotiator. I will just make only small observations. If you look at India, US, UAE, out of 90 lakh population of that country, 30 lakhs or 35 lakhs will be Indians only. So to that extent, you can say 30% of our manufacturer or services rendered, it's like it's extension of another state. So 30% you say, I'm not giving anything or I'm not gaining anything, whatever you may call it. You just look at it. Okay, in Th Telangana is there, maybe Andhra Pradesh is there, Maharashtra is there. Okay, another 30% of the population are getting the things are there. The second thing which I want to say is that one, yes, there are concerns out there, but when you just see the things is there, rules of origin are very important. They put 40% is the valuation. In some sectors, they put even 45%. Some of you who are the exporters from Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, under our advanced license scheme, I put only 15% value addition. So achieving 40% value addition or 45% value addition is a very difficult. So they have taken care of the domestic industry's requirements also. They have also put one more safeguard mechanisms out there. Nowadays we are putting it, otherwise you have to go for the WTO, which is more stringent, difficult to prove it, but this stringent is there, these things are. So they have taken care of certain issues out there, and since UAE is the third largest partner and we are entering into this Gulf site. Although the India Gulf Cooperation Council's agreement also should have started it, but it's not moving it. But then you have got an opening from this side is there. So that is how we should look at it. And over a period of time, we will understand it, what we have done and how we are going to get the benefits. With these words, 
I thank once again the Chamber of Commerce for inviting me here. And if I can contribute anything during the question and answer session, I will be able to contribute. Thank you very much. We have been uh, always receiving great uh, support from the DGFT's office from Hyderabad. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Srikar Reddy, uh, IFS Joint Secretary, Department of Commerce. Shri Bhaskaradi Garu, President FTCCI, uh, Mr. Sitaram Reddy Garu, Additional DGFT, Hyderabad, Mr. Anil Agrawal, Senior Vice President, Mr. Jaydev, Vice President, Shri Maya Desai, Chairman, Engineering Export Promotion Council of India, Mr. Tayal, Regional Chairman, Gems and Jewelry Export Promotion Council of India, Mrs. Kathy Naravane, CEO of FTCCI, distinguished guests, members of FTCCI, and members of other trade and industry associations, distinguished uh, other participants, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to one and all. I am delighted to come to Hyderabad and interact with all of you today. So, this is uh, like I interacted with the members of FAPSI then in 2012 as a regional passport officer in Hyderabad. I am again glad to again come back in a different capacity as Joint Secretary in Department of Commerce and uh, come and interact with you, especially also as the Chief Negotiator of the India-UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. And also, I am also the Nodal Officer in Department of Commerce for promotion of exports in the states of Telangana and AP. So I couldn't come uh, last last one year because of COVID and also because I was all engaged uh, with the india UAE negotiations. So, so this is the first opportunity I'm having to interact with the uh, trading community and also industry community based in Hyderabad and also in the state of Telangana. So as uh, uh, already Bhaskar Edigaro and uh, uh, Sitaram Edigaro gave some insights of the agreement and the importance of UAE. So as uh, uh, the uh, actual DGFT already have mentioned, this is the first agreement uh, India is signing out a period of 10 years with first uh, deep and comprehensive agreement. We, are, we had signed a small agreement with Mauritius which hardly is only 5% of the uh, tariff lines of both countries. So even for Mauritius, I was also the chief negotiator of India, so which we signed last year uh, in February. On 22nd February, this year signed on last Friday, 18th February. So, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister Modi's vision uh, that uh, trade is also an important engine of growth and especially export by promoting exports, uh, we can also create a lot of domestic employment. So, for that, uh, in August last year, he also had a meeting with all the stakeholders like with the our ambassadors and the consul general stationed abroad in all the 200 countries and with all the export promotion councils, the stakeholders in the state government like the industries department and he set a target of 400 billion exports for this financial year 2020-21. Already I am glad to inform you that already uh, as of 21st February according to the provisional figures we have already touched 361 billion US dollars and uh, we are hopeful that we will be crossing the 400 billion target uh, on 31st March this year. So you must be aware that uh, so far the maximum exports in value terms was in 2018-19 where we reached around US dollar 330 billion. So already we have crossed that by 30 billion and we are hopeful to target 400 billion, uh, cross 400 billion. So to sustain the, this momentum and uh, to reach, uh, say for example, overall target uh, like uh, we want to both goods and services combined reach 1 trillion by next 6-7 years. So for that, uh, for the, uh, at least for the merchandise trade, we should have at least 600 or 650 billion in next 5 years. 
So this year also we are uh, working with the, all the stakeholders to arrive at a target for the next financial year. So that is ongoing process. But the government has realized that uh, uh, new market access has to be provided to our exporting community. So that's why as you already was mentioned, now government is fast tracking negotiations with many countries. So already we have uh, concluded this uh, SEPA uh, with the UAE in a record time of uh, three months. But overall, it took six months if you include the pre-negotiation stay also, finalizing the terms of reference. And uh, we are already, uh, uh, like Australia, we are finalizing an interim agreement. Hopefully, it will happen next month, in the month of March. And UK also, it is the fast track mode. So I've also uh, started negotiating with the Gulf Cooperation Council, where UAE is also a member, but we have additional five countries. Saudi Arabia, we have big markets like Saudi, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar and Bahrain. So hopefully uh, we will we'll follow the same template as the UAE and we'll hopefully to conclude in this calendar in itself. And I am also the chief negotiator for the India-Israel FT and the India-Southern African Customs Union. All these FTAs government has put on the fast track mode so that uh, we will have access, market access for our exports. So if you can see uh, all the uh, negotiations, most of the countries, there is a lot of complementarity. There is not much competition between the products. So whatever we manufacture and whatever manufactured by these countries, there is a lot of complementarity. And uh, competition is, is hardly um, is manageable. Not much competition is there. In, in some products there is competition, but we, we can manage by... Uh, but the, the, it is a win-win situation for both the, uh, all, all the parties who are involved in such negotiations. That's why now... Uh, with renewed vigor, so the uh, Department of Commerce is conducting the negotiations. And uh, like uh, even the Honorable Prime Minister Modi, even for the embassies, because I come from the uh, Foreign Ministry but currently on deputation to Commerce, so he made it clear to the all the ambassadors and the Consul Generals that the, the main job of the embassies abroad is three T's, which is promoting trade, promoting tourism and technology transfer. So it is it's nothing but investment. So this is this is the job of the embassy support. So whenever any community or any exporter or any member of the industry reaches out to the embassy, now you can see, most of you must have seen the change in the response you are getting from the our colleagues uh, working in the embassy support. So under the vision of Honorable Prime Minister, so the, uh, India, see, India is not uh, ours to any free trade agreement. We, whatever we are seeing is whether it is a balanced and a fair agreement without any barriers like market even if you are getting market access there should not be any non-trade barriers so we have also tried to address some non-tariff barriers also when we negotiated this agreement i'll be explaining when i will make the presentation so with these words uh, maybe kathy will start the presentation Okay, the first slide shows why the trade agreement is important for India. So you can see both India and UAE are largest trading partners of each other. As already some of these speakers before we mentioned. So UAE is the third largest trading partner of India, but it is the second largest export destination of India after the United States. It is the overall, if you add imports also, it is the third largest trading partners of of India after US and China. But exports, it is the second largest destination. With uh, we have we have exports uh, of 29 billion in the year 2020. So there there was a fall during the COVID year last year, but we are only taking the figures of the uh, pre-COVID figures. And for UAE, India is the second largest trading partner and first largest export destination. So over 10% of our exports 
like our exports in the UAE imports constitutes about 10% of their imports. Similarly, in their exports also, India share is 10%. 10% of UAE exports comes to India. Next. You can see not only trade, uh, UAE also is one of the largest investor in India. And already it has invested close to 12 billion US dollars in India. And UAE also during uh, at various levels, it has also pledged to invest US dollars as per billion in India, especially in the infrastructure related projects. As you know, they have a lot of money in the sovereign wealth funds of UAE. And as already Sitaram Radhika has mentioned, about one third of the population of UAE are Indian origin, you know, Indian passport holders. So the annually they remit around 20 billion dollars to India. So they are making a significant contribution to the remittances to India. And uh, this agreement is not only about exchange of concession in goods and services, but it is a deep agreement covering various aspects. I'll be showing you in the next slide. So one, this 88 days is from the launch of the negotiations, formal, formal launch, which was done on 22nd September. And the official level we concluded on 20th December, but it was signed in February because we had a summit meeting in February. Next. So this you can see a comparison. So population, it hardly, a population is only around 10 crores population uh, in uh, UAE, one crore population, one crore, yeah, one crore population. But the GDP is significant. You can see the per capita GDP in uh, even in the purchasing for parity terms also it is 10 times in India. And also if you see the real GDP, uh, the difference is much more. It, it will be at least 1 is to 20, 20 times the richer than India. So the, the consumption of the people resident in UAE will be much more than the average consumption of the Indian population. You can see even though it is a small country, global merchandise trade, both exports and imports, more or less they, they are um, comparable with India. You can see the exports are more or less comparable to India around 280 billion and imports are also around 60% of India. Next. So this is the trade figures for 2019. This is basically mostly based on the data given by the, the United Arab Emirates to us. You can see the exports and imports. So we are exporting in 2019 around 26 billion of US dollar worth of products. And imports, we are importing around 25 billion. So more or less it is a balanced trade. But our imports, basically you can see the uh, uh, column where our imports are oil, only crude oil, which is 10 billion. Around 40% of our imports is oil only, crude oil. And around 27% uh, 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 is the real exports of UAE. Means the products which are manufactured in UAE, which fulfill the criteria of substantial transformation to get benefits in the agreement, which is hardly 27% of their exports. And remaining 33%, which are only re-exports, without any value addition, simply because Dubai is a transshipment hub. So the products come to India. So that 33 percent, which is around, which was around 8, 8 billion in 2019, so those products are, will not be eligible to get any benefit <coughs> under the FTA because they don't undergo any transformation in UAE. So they were they were also protecting the interests of Indian manufacturing industry. I already rules of origin, Sridhar Vadiyar mentioned something, but I'll tell when more when we go to that slide. Next. So this is the comprehensive because for the first time we are having a lot of new chapters. Like we have chapters on intellectual property rights, we have chapters on digital trade, which is a new thing. We have a chapter on the government procurement and we also chapter on investment facilitation. So these are all the new chapters. For the first time we are having these chapters in any of the FTA so far. So it's a very comprehensive agreement. Next. So here you can see uh, what is the benefit which will accrue to India or the Indian manufacturers or the Indian exporters? Here you can see 90% of our exports to UAE, so they, they, uh, the duty of 5% is levied. Even uh, tariff line also, around 89% of the UAE tariff lines, there is a simple duty of 5%. And uh, what we have got in the FTA? So UAE has agreed to give concessions on around 80% of the tariff lines, which is in the value terms, 90% of our exports immediately, once uh, it is entered into force. We are trying, the, we, are, we are working with the UAE that uh, 
the agreement will enter into force within 60 days time maybe in the first week of may we are trying so whenever the agreement enters into force from day one all the concessions all the duty whatever 5% is levied on indian exports 90% for example 26 billion, billion is our exports 90% of which which is close to 24 25 billion will get day one zero duty and remaining products for a period of 5 10 years all the tariff line uh, over 97 percent of the tariff lines which amounts to 99 percent in value terms of our exports will become zero so that is uh, also within five to ten years and you can see what are the sectors india will benefit so mostly to the labor intensive sectors the gem set jewelry textiles apparel and also agriculture and also fish fish products leather footwear sports goods pharmaceuticals medical devices and a lot of many engineering products like automobiles uh, anything electronic products so all the products will uh, get zero duty they only have uh, not given zero duty on a very limited product like tobacco or some alcohol those kind of product which are sensed to for them in the in the cultural sense for the other way they opened their full market for india next so here you can see uh, as, as I already shown in the other slide that uh, UAE uh, direct exports, if you remove the petroleum, it is uh, 30 per, 30, we are looking at 33 percent, 30 percent. So you can see uh, what are the products which we, Indian uh, manufacturers can benefit. Most of the products which we have given concessions can be used as input materials or intermediates to many of the uh, other industries where we can do the value addition and make finished products and again re-export. If you see, we are uh, allowing, say, for example, given concessions to polyethylene and polypropylene. So these will go as input material to plastic industry. So there our plastic MSMEs will gain and they can re-export. Similarly, uh, naphtha, LPG, all those things will also be as input material to many sectors. Even metals, copper, we have a deficiency, nickel, all those things we need. These are the products which India need from other countries, already importing from other countries. Even limestone we, we import from any country. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is a very complementary kind of agreement where it is a win-win situation. Whatever concessions we have given to UAE, nothing industry is not affected. And I am happy to inform that extensive stakeholder consultations were held during the negotiations. Many rounds, multiple rounds, I myself personally conducted with all the stakeholders, sometimes seven, eight rounds also with some sectors. And every uh, industry is on board. In writing, they are given that they are happy. Uh, to exchange concessions, whatever concessions they are given to UAE. So no industry, I think, uh, uh, is worried about whatever uh, import duty concessions we are given to the UAE. And secondly, uh, you can see from the exported, uh, the exclusion list, so we try to protect the MSME sectors where we felt that uh, we have to protect, like you can see from the slide, like uh, jewelry, except we are only given a small TRQ, but otherwise uh, the total jewelry sector is protected. Plastics, we are not open the plastic tariff lines, footwear, TVs, uh, aluminum and copper scrap, automobiles, medical devices and agriculture products. These lines are in the exclusion category. So we, are protect, we, we try to protect as much as we could uh, our MSME sector so that uh, they, 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 they feel assured, not that there is manufacturing capacity uh, in these products in UAE, but still we thought uh, if there was a chance to protect, we protect it. Next. So here you can see in the service sector also there is a lot of gain for India. We have, we, have, uh, we have received concessions in 111 out of the 164 subsectors of services. Now we will get uh, market access in uh, areas like computer services, audio visual services, where uh, our film and other industries will be very much interested educational health services, and also professional services. There also, uh, there's a gain for India. Next. So here, yeah. So this is very important for uh, most of you, because normally whenever we do FTA, our people think that uh, the transshipment of goods should not happen, and UAE being a hub. So many, uh, of some people in the industry think that it can be misused, but we have ensured that the rules of origin criteria is very stringent, only products that fulfill the substantive transformation criteria. Minimum valuation, like Sita already or Allah mentioned, 40%. And this agriculture product, it is wholly obtained criteria. And some products like aluminum, it is 45% value addition. So we have tried, we try to balance 
uh, that uh, the UAE should not be misused for routing of third country products. At the same time, we also ensured that our exporters should also not to face uh, problems. So if, if, the, if we put too high the valuation criteria, even our exporters will face difficulty, even though the UAE is giving tariff concessions. <coughs> so our exporters should not feel uh, any problem. And one important thing is that uh, the certificate of origin will be provided by the, the UAE Ministry of Economy and not the Dubai Chamber of Commerce or some other Chamber of Commerce. So, the government itself will declare about the origin of the product. So, it also assures our uh, manufacturers in India that this uh, route will not be misused. And uh, uh, all the transshipment goods will be out of the agreement. And one important thing, for the first time in any agreement, we have brought in this new rules, uh, uh, the rules of origin criteria for the steel industry, so which is called melt and pour. So which means that for any steel product, so it, uh, the steel has to be manufactured in UAE from the furnace. So they cannot simply import some steel and do some value addition cell. But steel industry, the steel, they can only import ore and do melting and uh, create. So that is the kind of thing which we have done for the first time. The steel industry is very happy with this uh, new thing which we have done in this agreement. Next. Sir, this uh, CEO uh, this through the ministry of... Yeah, ministry of economy. So because uh, if, there, if we uh, give it to some trade and uh, trade association, there could be some misuse. We thought uh, to prevent any misuse, so the Ministry of Economy will issue the certificate of course. Industry insisted. Yeah. The industry insisted for that during the negotiation. Country of origin, because we had lot of apprehension. And Dr. Shrikar Reddy really had a tough time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So one important new thing we have done is the uh, pharmaceutical annex. So this is a sort of a mutual recognition agreement for any product in any FTA. This is the first thing we have done. So far we don't have any such mutual recognition agreement with any country or any product in any FTA. So here the Indian pharmaceutical industry will immensely benefit. So now the Indian pharmaceutical formulations, there is a zero duty in UAE. But uh, there is a barrier that uh, the registration time is taking up to one and a half to two years. So what we got through this annex is that if at all our products are registered with developed country regulators like US FDA, UK MHRA or EU uh, or Australia or Japan regulatory agencies and Canada also, so they get automatic approval within 90 days of the application. So thereby they can plan. So we cut down the time for the registration and mar marketing in UAE from two, uh, one and a half to two years to 90 days. And secondly, for others who are not registered with the six uh, developed country regulators, we said uh, they will preferably do in a period of 270 days. So this is a big thing uh, which will help our Indian, manufacture, Indian pharmaceutical industry. They can uh, directly benefit by in the UAE market and also use UAE hub to re-export to other countries. And as uh, Siddhar Radhiya mentioned, uh, we have for the first time included a permanent safeguard mechanism. So we have a safeguard mechanism in the WTO. Whenever there is a su sudden surge of imports of any products, we can import a safeguard duty to safeguard the interest of a domestic manufacturing industry. But here, normally in FTAs, there is a bilateral safeguard mechanism which is transitional in nature. Means, uh, for example, if you are liberalizing uh, uh, concessions on any product, say, in a, over a period of five years, the tariff is reduced from 10, say, to zero in a period of five years. So the uh, bilateral safeguard mechanism initially was in other FTAs was only for that five years period or 10 years period. Now in this agreement, we have made it for 10 years, and not 10 years, but permanent. So as long as the agreement continues, the, the, our, our industry, manufacturing industry can benefit from this permanent safeguard mechanism. Whenever there is a surge in the imports, uh, they can simply uh, file a petition before the uh, Director General of Trade Remedies. <coughs> and uh, they, they can benefit uh, from this uh, thing. This is the feedback we received from the industry, especially EPCs and other trade and industry associations. So the purely what are the gains and, uh, and the employment potential is from the industry themselves, industry bodies, and it is not my guesswork. You can see the gems and jewelry. Uh, uh, in 2019, we were uh, exporting, say, around 9 billion. They said additionally, we can export 4.5 billion and create around 400,000 employment. 
सिल्वर इंजीनियरिंग गोड्स वी वर एक्सपोर्टिंग अराउंड फोर पॉइंट फोर बिलियन एंड एडिशनल वी कैन एनहैंड बाय अनदर फाइव बिलियन ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ फाइव इयर्स नॉट इमीडिएटली बट नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स दिस इज वी आर सी मे बी ट्वेंटी सेवन ट्वेंटी एट वी विल सी दैट दिस फिगर्स कुड बी रियलाइज वी थिंक वी आर मोर कंजर्वेटिव बट वी कैन गेन मोर सिमिलर इन प्लास्टिक ऑल्सो वी कैन आई थिंक ग्रो बाई टू हंड्रेड परसेंट बिकॉज यू आर ऑल्सो गेटिंग प्लास्टिक इंडस्ट्री इनपुट मेटेरियल ऑल्सो वील बी Uh, they will be benefiting the industry plastic industry will get cheaper inputs and also they can make finished product and re-export to uae with thereby creating 100000 jobs and similarly textiles also there is a huge potential like we are exporting currently 1 billion additionally 2 billion they are projected that all the exports like in the cotton textiles or the man made textiles and other wool and other things they, they said we can gain and also create around 200000 jobs In other sectors, other see only in the eight sectors we are listed. We we are we are saying that we will create some one million job. This is as I mentioned. This is the as per the inputs provided by the export promotion councils and industry associations. So they are projecting uh, that India will benefit in this manner. Next, the overall summary. Uh, you can see this is the fastest negotiated FTA. This is only from the date of formal launch in September and con uh, conclusion at the official level in December. As I mentioned, this is a. Uh, I think uh, I can claim that uh, we have taken everybody on board when we negotiated all the line department ministries and all the trade industry association. And thankfully, the virtual technology, digital technology, helped me a lot. So within short notice, I used to call. Uh, I uh, hold virtual meeting with all the industry stakeholders, and some of you from Hyderabad. I remember you also participated in in the discussions and also gave your inputs. So we took all the inputs into consideration, and even in writing that uh, whatever we offered, especially because everybody will be happy to get something from UAE. So we should take uh, our stakeholders along in what we are giving to the UAE. So all the industry and the ministry is on board. Uh, that is the thing, and this is the. most comprehensive fta both for the uae and also for india as already mentioned this is a most comprehensive fta because we have a lot of other things like digital trade we will benefit in other other areas as i mentioned and uh, we are projecting to uh, our exports will reach 100 billion us dollars in next 5 years from the current average of 60 billion before the pandemic so we will uh, immediately gain by increasing and enhancing our exports beyond the pre pandemic level and also reach for the 100 billion next 5 years and as i mentioned employment is created in labor intensive sectors and we are expecting 10 lakh new jobs will be created in a period of 5 years and even the input materials also will be for the other sectors and also we we, we think that we, we will also move in high in the value chain and enhance our exports in high tech high technology products like engineering products electronics medical devices and pharmaceuticals we, we we think our share in the high value products will also increase not only the labor intensive sectors and uh, from uae is a trading hub so we would like to uh, we think that this agreement will enable our exporters to use uae as a base to reach out to entire middle east and north africa regions and also as uh, earlier mentioned one third of the population is uae even according to the uae studies So around 135 new jobs will be created for Indians. Indians in UAE, even the UAE side, they also uh, told in the press conference. So overall, even for example, whatever UAE gains, it will help the Indian uh, people to get employment there, and also the remittances will flow back from UAE to India. Whatever they gain, because the uh, one-third population in India, so it will again flow back to India. So it is a big win-win agreement for both India and UAE. And uh, I thank uh, FTCCI, President Sri Bhaskar Digaru, and also the Telangana government, especially Krishna Bhaskar and uh, Jay Sir Jay Sir for organizing this uh, uh, interactive session with all of you at a very short notice. And Kathy also took a lot of efforts. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity. If there are any questions, uh, I can take it. Uh, any question, anybody? Please, you can introduce yourself, uh, sector, and also question. I can respond to the specific queries. I represent a company called Skyshade based in Hyderabad. Uh, you did mention about the IPR. 
can you briefly put up what exactly is there uh, regarding the India UAE and the IPR sector? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. So, IPR chapter <laughs> is there. So, it is uh, Belgium chapter uh, is a WTO agreement, which is a TRIPS agreement, trade related intellectual property rights. So, we are a little bit over and above TRIPS in, in especially copyrights, uh, protection of copyright, because we have a strong uh, industry in the music and film industry, and also in the geographical indications trademarks, and also especially in that genetic resources and traditional knowledge. Like uh, we are also signatory of the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Nagoya Protocol, where India is a biological diverse country. So no, we think that there should be equitable sharing of benefits. For example, somebody uses our biological resource and develops a medicine or some other product, a chemical or anything. So there should be a, a benefit sharing agreement between the innovator and also the the people like the indigenous people who are holding that knowledge with them. So these are the new elements we brought into the agreement which are uh, over and above the TRIPS agreement which are beneficial to India. Uh, anything else you want? Or is there oh, thank you. Dr. Srikar Reddy, I got uh, three questions. One uh, regarding uh, how will the uh, Abrahamic Accords which Israel signed with UAE and uh, some of the Gulf countries uh, affect this particular agreement. Two, whether this agreement will lead to Gulf uh, GCC cooperation on a larger scale. And three, this 40% origin rule. Uh, most of the Emirates, especially Rasul Khayyam and Azwan, have got uh, totally free trade zones. Uh, will it in any way impact this 40% so, uh, zones? And one question to Dr. Sitaram Reddy, uh, why did we come out of RCEAP and again going for FTAs? Uh, because we are on an Atmanirbhar uh, uh, program. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let me take all your questions and maybe I'll, I'll request. Uh, I'll answer that. I'll, I'll request if anything to add from Sitaram Reddy. Gar. So, See, Israel, uh, we, we should not see anything uh, politically thing, but you, you must have noticed that recently there is a new quad which comprises India, Israel, US and UAE. So we call U2, I2. I2 means India, Israel and U2 means US and uh, UAE. So now this is only a strategic uh, kind of thing. Maybe we don't know because even for the other quad, no, which is the Australia, Japan, India and US, so now, now they are also discussing the trade and economic things. Future, I think, look, I cannot predict or anything, but there is a possibility that there could be cooperation on the trade front also under this new quad between India, UAE, and Israel. Regarding the GCC, as I mentioned already, I held a pre-negotiation meeting this month in the first week. So we are hopeful that uh, now that one of their important uh, member of the GCC has signed a bilateral uh, uh, comprehensive economic partnership agreement with India. So now we are uh, at the preliminary stage, we are doing some study, uh, how uh, extending further to the whole GCC will benefit each other. So hopefully next month uh, we will try to finalize the terms of reference. And now we will be using, uh, we will propose to the GCC side that uh, we can use the UAE agreement as a template so that we can quickly conclude the negotiations for a India GCC FTA. And uh, rules of origin, uh, what was the exact question? 40% you said, but uh, uh, can you uh, again elaborate on your question? So let me answer before that the Atmanir Varta Bharat. So the two con uh, we see the two concepts are complementary to each other. So as already government and also Honorable Prime Minister and our Commerce Minister have explained on numerous occasions, Atmanirvarta Bharat means not isolationist or closing doors from others. It is opening, like we want to enhance the manufacturing capacity in India, to link up to the supply chains. We want to be a reliable supply supply partner to many countries in the, in the new COVID era. So I think... Uh, 
by as we as i mentioned like government sees uh, the trade as an important engine of economic growth just to inform so this uh, 2021 22 the exports have performed much better than the average domestic domestic growth as i mentioned like we were only uh, less than around 290 billion dollars exports last year but this this financially we are, we are going to touch 400 billion that is our 30% increase in our exports so we can uh, export is an important engine of economic growth and it will also create employment so these are all not mutually exclusive to uh, each other and moreover as i said we are looking at balanced trade agreement which are reciprocal in nature and fair so that we'll get market access without any entire barriers as i mentioned i also mentioned even though already our pharmaceutical formulation especially are are already receiving zero duty market entry but we have come up with this agreement or pharmaceutical annex whereby the whatever barrier no like it will take a lot of time for the market access uh, so those those kind of things also we have tried to address in this agreement in the technical barriers to trade also there is a uh, lot of cooperation also we have nsi cooperation between our uh, regulators on both sides who formulate the technical barriers uh, or the uh, regulation technical regulation not barriers but technical regulation so that our standards uh, mutually how we can recognize each other standards and also the cooperation between the standard setting bodies on both sides so those kind of cooperation mechanism is also there in the text of the agreement thank you <laughs> sir this is naidu i'm from uh, food processing agriculture and food processing sector i just wanted to understand uh, because this uh, line of business is completely unorganized in middle east i mean uae or any other gcc areas and there are a lot of uh, payment issues being arised for most of the people over there is there any mechanism or arbitration mechanism being uh, considered in this agreement where if there is some payment issue who should we as an exporter approach over there in most of the places the importer is getting vanished over there most of them are indians and they'll come back to india we will not be able to trace them back again uh, thank you for this question see we also signed one agreement between apeda aldara which is their uh, food security agency and also standard setting agency and the dp world so this is this also serves uh, both purposes of both parties like from india we can increase our exports to uae in agriculture products and for uae Uh, they are assured about their food security because they are a net food importing country because they have to depend lot from india so regarding payments uh, these kind of trade disputes uh, there is no mechanism as uh, in the sense we only have a country to country dispute settlement mechanism but individual uh, trade disputes like uh, for example defaults so we encourage traders to do the export insurance credit insurance export insurance kind of thing and also like we also provide some subvention also for the export insurance and also we have to use the regular our embassy and the consulate where we are also trying to strengthen now that we have signed the agreement we will have more officers who will try to uh, implement the agreement and also make our community exporters community to benefit i think uh, is there any these kind of issues we can uh, try to raise bilaterally uh, diplomatically and resolve that mainly because this fresh business is always unorganized sir and all the trade happens on free like you know without any lc or without any payment guarantee and uh, people and uh, for our uh, export credit guarantee ecgc all these countries under high risk category and even the premium levels are so high and most of the customers they are not even under the list of insuring them so what i say is uh, see as, as you said the high risk category countries normally the premium is high so if, if the exporters community you can represent that uh, if government can reduce the premium or something that we can consider separately but as the trade happens as a form of contract between the importer and the exporters so in any trade agreement is enabling provision where the duties are reduced so individual things have to be uh, whatever in the contract you will have some legal things but we will try to normally the first uh, thing is such kind of disputes 50% i have seen in my experience working in vietnam also will be resolved by routing the complaints through the local chambers of commerce so i have seen 50% of resolution occurs once the embassy take it up with the local chambers and another 50% sometimes some people like you said vanish or no those there you have to see how we can uh, explore the legal options 
So that's all because you, you cannot have individual disputes as a part of the agreement. Yeah, please. Coming to your uh, issue that uh, some foreign importers are not making, uh, take the material and they don't make the payment. So we have a complaint against them. See, we have an institutional mechanism under foreign trade policy. See, we have got a jurisdiction of our Indian exporters, trade disputes and quality complaints. So when we receive complaints from abroad, we talk to our exporters, we we'll try to resolve them. And if we find that there is a mistake on the part of our exporter, I have got enforcement mechanism is there, penal provisions are there, where we will debar them and we will cancel IEC number. As far as complaints against the foreign importers is concerned, what we have got the mechanism is that if I receive a complaint is there, I will send it to the Department of Commerce, from there it will go to the Ministry of External Affairs and it goes to the yes. missions. There they will try to resolve amicably, informally, but they cannot, we don't have a jurisdiction on a foreigner in there. So many times, the embassies are able to resolve the issues are there. And whenever they find that too many complaints are coming in, even the government will be taking care of it. See, an individual case, they may not be able to solve it because only the legal recourse will be there, which may be very costly at all. But if consistently, persistently things are happening in, that those governments will be certainly will be taking some other measures from there is there. But it will be only through the informal mechanism through our embassies only will be going into the thing itself. And I also want to answer about RCEP. See, when I was there in Delhi, working in there, we had, as a part of Lupis policy, they had all the negotiations. After I came back only, the government would have taken the cost-benefit analysis and then they would have withdrawn from that. Beyond that, I don't want to comment anything on RCEP. In fact, he will be also, something is there, because after everything is over, then you will be taking a cost-benefit analysis, then the final call will be taken. At that time, the government has taken the final call. So I, I, I cannot say anything is there, about that is there. But people will say that one, India is withdrawing from that. No, India has not withdrawn because of protectionist tendencies. Some other causes would have been there. That's all, only I can say. Sir, in SIPA, has the Indian citizen got any relaxation in Golden Visa rules of UAE, sir? Golden Visa, UAE's Golden Visa is there, where no. minimum investment is required, AED 10 million dollars. No, no, we, we are not, uh, any visa is not mentioned in the SIPA. Overall, broadly, it will benefit the movement of our professionals to work in UAE because new employment will also be created by SIPA in UAE. No, but that UAE on golden visa is there, sir, UAE government. So that they have brought out recently yeah. because of the COVID, no? Yeah. Because it is related to investment. So those things are not discussed. Basically, it is for the movement of the professionals, no? Or to engage in the trading services. No, not uh, to settle down investment. Investment is a different thing. Thank you, Dr. Shrikar Reddy. My compliments on two account to you as a chief negotiator. One is to include first time a chapter on MSM. This shows how much importance today our government is giving to MSME sector. My second question is, you also included a chapter on technology. As you say, three T's of Prime Minister. The last T is also technology. Now, what is the provision provided in this agreement to scout, to look for, and to source for technology? As you know, Hyderabad is acquiring a place in the world market for high value added products, particularly defense, avionics, biotechnology and other things. So, and of course last but not least, medical devices as my friend prompts. So what is the mechanism? We want to get technology. And unless until you have technology, there won't be any incremental exports in the products what we are making. We have to climb the level, the ladder of the technology to get high value added and new markets for our product. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you, Mahesh Deshaji. First, I'll take the question on the technology. So, we have a chapter on investment and trade, basically to facilitate investment, uh, both sides, mm -hmm. uh, to set up, establish joint ventures between both parties. So, we have set up a India UAE Technical Council on Investment and Trade Promotion and Facilitation to monitor investment and trade relations to identify opportunities. So, this uh, will meet periodically and uh, help the business delegations to interact, to also make arrangements, to visit each other countries, to engage in the B2B format or roadshows and other formats. So that uh, opportunities uh, like MSMEs, you can inform them about the what are the technology you're looking at. If the UAE has a technology, then it, uh, the uh, even our embassies and consulates in uh, UAE, they can also facilitate in having this uh, B2B mechanism and uh, the, the technology transfer can be done. Regarding uh, SMEs, thank you, you have raised a very good uh, thing. I forgot to mention, <laughs> we are also having a uh, chapter for the first time on the cooperation on the MSMEs, uh, the micro, small and medium enterprises. So this uh, will bring uh, both our MSME sectors in both countries. And uh, like, uh, they'll, they'll expose opportunities. So we'll only provide the enabling mechanism as I mentioned, for embassies and also we'll try to have a identify some of the their business association at the MSME level and also do the matchmaking on the Indian side. We'll try to have uh, like meetings going and we'll see, we'll take it out uh, further from there. Thank you. Uh, Chaiwan, with your permission, I think uh, it's not a question actually. Two minutes with your permission, right? Uh, firstly, thank you very much, uh, Government of Telangana headed by Mr. Jayesh Ranjan and Mr. Krishna Bhaskar, uh, along with uh, our own FTCCI to facilitate this uh, uh, interactive meet. Well, uh, my dear Dr. Shikharati, sir. Well, uh, many people used to have uh, myths, like uh, bureaucrats, be it IS officers or IS, IS officers. We used to look at them in different I think uh, people like you have erased completely that myopic view and uh, you are working. You might be thinking you are doing your part of your duty. <laughs> like uh, Sitaram Reddy sir, uh, we keep interacting and uh, the DGFT, how he executes his job, we know very well for a long time. I am a member of, uh, a team member of uh, Mr. Uh, Vasco Reddy and FCC. But uh, now, uh, as a representative of uh, board member of uh, Parmaxim, the powerful uh, pharmaceutical council of India. I can watch what are all you did in SEPA. I think uh, heads off. It's not a small thing. It's not the question of uh, enhancing the uh, immediate uh, exports, but the kind you did for any dossier, dossier in the sense, any, any product, any drug, to get an approval used to take 24 months. Especially, you know very well, the value of the time in selling the pharmaceutical goods. Time is money. One day, one month makes huge difference. And here we used to take 24 months. And afterwards also, you're not sure whether you will be able to sell that product or not. That will be uh, uh, ups that will become obsolete. Now, the SEPA had a given a provision. India has the largest number of units in the world approved by the international agencies. Like eight agencies they have to fit in SEPA, under SEPA cover, like USFDA, USA, MHRA, EMA. <coughs> Australia, uh, FDA, where all, all those regulatory uh, bodies, if we are recognized by them, this is as if automatic recognition in the UAE. You can straight away export to them. That's a matter of 90 days, but within the 90 days, you can uh, kind of complete the formalities. By doing so, it's not just improving your exports. UAE, we, we might think that it's not a big deal, but it opens it, a, a big gateway to the GCC countries, African countries, and from there, it's not the economy and bilateral. I always believe, uh, being in this industry for a long time, any economy, um, economic trade, FTA, uh, uh, this kind of agreements, will also enhance uh, the cultural cooperation, the mutual cooperation between the countries, and in a holistic way, politically also, the country get a lot of mileage, and we get huge mileage. 
and uh, it's not a small thing, sir. Whatever you achieved, uh, officers like Sarvanadi or no, he himself has told, uh, well, he himself is a major contributor. How much you? We saw as a passport officer actually how rational steps he used to take in the in the in case of emergencies, how he used to uh, cut the barriers and uh, used to provide the services and all we had. But now, uh, off late, we've been uh, uh, seeing it. This SEPA is a, a great example as a chief negotiator. You did wonders. Compliments to you, hats off to you. And you did a great job for the, uh, the India and the people of India also. This is all I want. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, I have a question to Mr. Krishnamaskar, uh, sir. Uh, my name is Ahmed Khan. I'm the CEO. My name is Ahmed Khan. I'm the CEO at Clay Capital. Uh, we operate a boutique IP firm uh, out of uh, Dubai and India. Specialized mostly into uh, supply chain finance and trade financing, along with cross-border debts for corporates operating out of India and uh, operating out of the UAE. Uh, the context that I want to have here, I mean, with this extraordinary SEPA agreement, uh, what is our uh, uh, Telangana plan towards uh, exploring this more in the local context, you know, uh, both in terms of uh, uh, enhancing trade as well as uh, promoting businesses. Uh, would like to have uh, a brief understanding on that. Thanks. Thank you for your question, but uh, the answer, the scope of the answer to your question is rather broad. Uh, suffice it to say that government is very much committed and on board. Gems and Jewelry, Pharma, as well as engineering exports from a bulk of our exports to the UAE and therefore we are taking very keen interest there. More details, I think, we'll just be speaking offline and I'll be very happy to fill you in on that. No, just to answer the question, maybe we have the regional chairman of the Gems and Jewelry Export Promotion Council. He can just give his uh, inputs. There, there. Okay. But this is a major sector that would be benefiting from the agreement. First of all, thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity and uh, Mr. Krishna Bhaskar sir, had, we had meeting also with you. I just want to update you, uh, Telangana government is so keen to uh, launch a uh, gem park and from up front, Mr. Uh, Jayesh Indian sir has called us and he has offered us, we were, if you want to have one gem park, he has offered some land also. So we are so happy that Telangana government is so keen to promote export in our jewelry sector. And first of all, thank you, thanks to you sir. Uh, this is a major relief for our sector because, as you know, we are trying to capture 10 million exports for uh, coming year. And uh, Dubai is main hub from where India used to export a lot of jewelry over there. So this is a very big relief for us. And in terms of import also, we have seen the 200 tons import we can do at the direction of 1% duty. So this is also a very good relief. So I am very much thankful for the uh, government of India for doing this uh, SEPA agreement. And Telangana government is so keen to promote jewelry sector and uh, very much thanks to the Nayana Gornabut also. Thank you. Good evening. Our strength of India, Telangana, the first day agriculture is uh, called the biodiversity, is based with the agriculture, where the natural farming and all. Where the exports looking in this direction, natural product, that means organic products, that is uh, very, very uh, futuristic. Otherwise, our farmers are dying. Is almost every estate also we have seen the uh, suicide cases. But this is the strength. Of what you know, like a mango, guava, so the horticulture products are there. I, mean, I grow 2,500 acres. The mango is a, even though it is a biodiversity project. But export? Why you can't do export? This is the organic, natural farming, and also the we have the. Uh, health, uh, health of the human being, health of the planet. Both the, it is a place where we are not promoting the, to the seriously. The any country is developed, either tourism or uh, any income is generated. The the chief secretary of the state uh, brings the people who are come from the abroad and take them round around where the such things are there to impress. Uh, this this type of culture has to come. Where the Prakriti, we have Ayurveda, Yunani, Homeopathy, uh, the type of our native systems which are not there. Yoga, meditation, all this, you know, people, whole world is looking. Ours is the Vedic culture. This Vedic culture never, never can be in, in the world 
which is, uh, if you may be, you know, talking about yoga, which is uh, our uh, beloved Prime Minister is talking, it, it spreads. When it comes to the recent COVID-19, the, the basic things, which is the fundamental things are available in India, but we are not promoting even that the, the scale, small scale. If we promote the bigger, everyone will change. They, suppose the mangoes goes to the market. Yeah. If we look at our export figures to EAE, in fact, we have got Guvas mangoes are going about 185 crores. Bananas are going about 158 crores from India. Even genus caps and chilies are going crores are there. So it's not that exports are not What I'm saying is that one basic thing that you said Telangana, we have got 30% of That's not an issue. Now coming to the traditional things, whatever you are telling me, you see in the services negotiations, if you see it, we have got music, films, and other things are there. In fact, Many times when we talk about SIPAs and all this, we will always concentrate on goods only. Many times we don't talk about services. So over a period of time, you will understand that the people also will be changed. Even Bangladeshis and Pakistanis and other people also may be converting to Indian type of things. If you look at our films, important for us. It takes time. That's the occasion which is there. But we are doing it. But I think from Telangana, he can Only one, 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 uh, one thing which I will say. Farmer flights must be there. That this is the, what we are doing. It is, uh, you know, maybe it is uh, out of 100 uh, percent of which we have the capacity. Doing 1 percent, 2 percent. The figure maybe is uh, big, but for India, it is not like that. We have so much agriculture, so much, uh, but the export we must have to the extent to that the farmer flights must go. That we must have that type of a level. We, if your figures, I am not denying that, you know, we are not doing. We are, we are. But there is a big scope for the agriculture. It's uh, not only the uh, few items, much bigger scale. Not not only the, the uh, UAE. The whole world is looking natural. If they get the best price, it will spread the all farmers will get built. And also biodiversity will be protected. Your planet will be protected. You will be a healthy person. So, uh, one of the first things which Sir Joint Secretary Sir had told us when he had landed on Monday was on three matters, uh, matters relevant to this are being processed in government of India with the government of Telangana. The first is we are very soon, Sir has told us, we will be having a phytosanitary center 24-7 at our airport. So we don't have to route our export routes anywhere else. The second point which Sir also told us, I mean, sorry Sir if I am speaking on your behalf. I mean, yeah, so he will also be enabling with us a facility for a dry port. So uh, we are the only southern state which is landlocked and don't have access to a state. So agri-produce will be one of the biggest uh, gainers out of this. And the third point is we'll be, uh, again with Sir's help, we are going to take up cargo clearance at a much larger scale in our own airport, instead of having to go to airports like Chennai and Bangalore. So I would argue uh, that the coming uh, six months to eight months would lead a lot of quantum gains which will actually interest in agri-exports and that will actually show up in next year's figures. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think I should sign up for one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, just I would like to add, uh, like uh, recently, just uh, two weeks ago, FTCCA had a virtual meeting with our Honorable Minister Pishwar, and where uh, these issues were raised and the Commerce uh, Ministry has responded positively that we will all try to look into the setting up of the 24-hour SPS facility at the airport and also will also help in the dry port like we'll also work with the customs uh, department like CBIC and also regarding the cargo clearance also we'll, we'll, we'll try to help the Telangana government and uh, uh, for the just to add for the agriculture products I'm happy to inform that in the agreement itself both parties have agreed to conclude a mutual recognition agreement on organic products within one year's time. So by uh, within one year's time, you will have a enable, enabling provisions or as an annex uh, to the TBT chapter where you can enhance your exports in the or, or, or organic products. And uh, as uh, I would like to also inform that uh, Telangana is an important manufacturing state of India and also it contributes a lot to our exports also. Like Krishna Bhaskar mentioned that variety of products like gems and jewelry, pharmaceuticals, a variety of engineering products, and also agricultural products, textiles. So 
So these are the products I think uh, which will benefit immensely from this India US SEPA. And uh, as a nodal officer myself, uh, I'm ready to uh, make matchmaking between the uh, uh, exporters and also industry based in Telangana state and also in UAE. So there also we can uh, like improve their chances of increasing their exports to UAE. Other questions which I uh, is not got the answer. No, I think uh, we, other questions are there. Uh, we can give chance to others, then we will come back to last. Okay. okay. If there are no more questions, uh, I would like to conclude by thanking uh, the President Bhaskaradigaru, President FTCCI, and uh, the State Government of Telangana. Uh, Jay Sanjan sir is not here today, uh, Mr. Baskar, and uh, Sita Nardigaru, uh, our additional DGFT in Hyderabad, for organizing this uh, important interactive session with the industry. And also, this is my first visit as a nodal officer for the state of Telangana for export promotion. So, thank you very much. I uh, conclude. Thank you. Before we conclude, uh, Mr. Krishna Bhaskar, we would like to hear from you just two minutes on. Please, please, sir, because uh, we miss your presence. Uh, we can't leave you like that. You are a stakeholder. Thank you very much uh, uh, to all the dignitaries in the head, starting with uh, Joint Secretary, sir, the Anderson TGFT, and all the honorable members of FTCCI. Me speaking at this stage is reminds me of the old movies I used to watch in cinema theaters as a kid. The police come at the end. <laughs> After everything is done, <laughs> I have really nothing to add. I have mentioned the core sectors. Uh, all I have to say is uh, that government of Telangana has taken this as an extremely prestigious and uh, um, critical initiative and we have been giving very express instructions at the highest level to ensure that uh, any operationalization of extra export units or any pain points faced by current exporters should be addressed very separately. In fact, we will be doing that in the separate meetings. I didn't think this was the right forum to actually talk about it. But uh, what I would uh, seriously request everybody here is to reach out to us personally. What we are trying to institutionalize is once a fortnight, we'll be having an export-related meeting. The, the modalities are to be worked out probably in two, three weeks. So we'll try to see and uh, to the extent possible, we'll try to be your ambassadors and other departments as well. Please treat us as something like your own advocates and record. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Mr. Krishna Bhaskar. Sir, I have two suggestions here on the SEPA. One, uh, we can have a help desk at the Ministry of Commerce at, as well as the state government uh, so that the, our exporters can take benefit and if they have any queries, they can get connected with the nodal officer at uh, Ministry of Commerce. As well as the UAE new CG is likely to come in the second week of July. Maybe there also they can get help. And another, there are several untapped export uh, products, especially in the GI tag. So as we go along, I think those can be considered for the future inclusion. So thank you and a big round of applause to both the Reddies as well as Mr. Krishna Raskar. Uh, we have been receiving good support from the government of Telangana, government of India. Uh, I request uh, Mr. Mila Jaydev to present a memento to Dr. Srikar Reddy. I request Mr. Jaydev also to present a FTCC literature and uh, the delegation which went to Dubai, we brought out a report uh, of the post event. I request uh, Mr. Anil Agarwal, Senior Vice President, to present a memento as well as FTCC literature and report of Dubai to Mr. G. Sitaram Reddy, additional DGFT Hyderabad.
I now request uh, Mr. K. Bhaskar Reddy to present a moment to FTCCI literature to Mr. Krishna Bhaskar, the Director of Industries Government of Telangana. Thank you, sir, for joining at this meeting. Thank you. I now request uh, Mr. Anil Agarwal, Senior Vice President of FTCCI, to propose vote of thanks. Good evening. I am privileged to propose vote of thanks to Dr. Srikar Reddy, Joint Secretary, Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce, Government of India, G. Sitaramaya Reddy, Additional Director General of Foreign Trade, Ministry of Commerce, Government of India, Krishna Bhaskar IS, Director of Industries, Government of Telangana. Thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time and addressing our members. Thank you, Srikar Redigal, sir, your presentation on SEPA and explaining the salient futures is explanatory, sir, it's very good. And uh, our members, uh, I think you have answered all the queries or uh, all the queries and uh, uh, on the questions and answers. Sir, FTCI would be happy to extend all support and will make, will continue to make all efforts to, uh, all efforts to enhance the trade between the two countries, more particularly with the state of Telangana. I am confident that this meeting, uh, I am confident this meeting would have benefited all the members. This interaction provides us with the opportunity to understand the business opportunities and provide us to make all efforts in reaping the full benefits. The government has done its job. Now it is for us to make all the efforts to reap all the benefits. Thank you, all the managing committee members past presidents, members of uh, FTCCI, representatives from government, and thank you, press and media, for your coverage. Thank you once and all. I request the managing committee members and past presidents to come on for the group photo with the dignitaries of the guys. I request uh, Mr. Mahesh Desai also to come, uh, Mr. Mahendra Thayar. Yesterday's Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right, sir.